Dreams. Well, this is how they're meant to be. Plain and simple. ever meet again? Please don't talk in riddles. Do you still remember when we first arrived in Panacone? Who would have thought our paths would cross in such a way? Come to think of it, I didn't even get a chip. Simply put, I'm a self-annihilator who was cursed by the Nihility. My hometown was destroyed a long time ago, and the whole world was erased beneath their shadow. In order to fight against the cruel end of self-destruction, I went on a journey in search of a way to sever the chains of the Nihility. After a long and grueling search, I am convinced that my destination lies within the depths of the Dark Web, where reality and the Nihility are separate. In there lurks a secret called Device 9. One day, I'll reach it. The ocean of stars is vast. And given our destinations, I'm afraid our paths may not cross again. But the trailblazing expedition ahead is always full of unknowns. And my blade is sharp enough to sever fate. As long as we maintain our original resolve, I believe there will come a day where we will meet again. Ah. In that case, I must apologize for my rudeness. Do you remember when we first met? I once said you reminded me of an acquaintance. Because of the self-annihilator's curse, my memories are stripped away, blurring my past. And after our journey together, what I originally thought were familiar feelings were merely illusions. I believe this was truly our first meeting. right. What matters more is not who I am, but what we have done together. This story will forever be etched in my heart. We both still have our own paths to walk. So let's forge ahead. Hopefully, if we meet again, it'll be beneath clear skies. Chin up! 
Pom Pom. Don't be sad. Uh, don't cry. Wow. Your method of consolation is truly unsophisticated. Still better than just standing there like a scarecrow. Oh, hey, you're finally back. We told Pom Pom all about our adventure, and they suddenly started crying. I've never seen Pom Pom so sad before. <laughs> the conductor never cries. Pom Pom is never sad. <laughs> it all out. Everyone, could you all take a break in the next car? Don't worry. I'll stay here with Pom Pom. But... Let's go, March. It's okay. Oh, Pom... Pom-Pom would be so distraught. Those three nameless must have meant a lot to Pom-Pom. No one knows exactly when Pom-Pom boarded the Express, but one can surmise that their journey has been filled with many hellos and goodbyes. Probably more than we can imagine. The fact that they're crying so hard is probably a good sign. It proves that Pom Pom's emotions haven't become dulled by the grind of time. They still deeply cherish every nameless who has boarded the Express and value every journey shared with them. Leave it to Himako. When it comes to comforting, 
There's no one better on the Express. <laughs> well, they were a little emotional at the time, but I'm afraid that's not out of the question. Since you joined us, the Express has stayed longer than anticipated at every stop along the way. And to ensure that everyone always makes it back on board, Pom Pom has had no choice but to delay the warp jump schedule. I see. <laughs> no wonder I can regularly hear Pom Pom pacing anxiously up and down the corridor. Turns out Pom Pom's been silently putting in a lot of work for us. Wow. Different from typical vehicles, the Astral Express converts every trailblaze into the energy it needs to run. Ideally, as long as trailblazing expeditions continue without interruption, the Express will receive a constant flow of energy, much like a perpetual motion machine. But because of our previous encounters, fuel is being used up much faster than expected. We can probably only pull off two more warp jumps at most. Only two more? Isn't that super risky? Oh, I don't want to become an ice cube floating... How about we shove you back in the space station's computer, then? Which also means that we must prudently consider our next destination. Yes, uh, I've already checked the astral charts. The two nearest worlds to us are the oceanic planet of Lushaka and the agate world Melustanen. As for which one we're headed to, that still requires a vote. Or perhaps you might consider a suggestion. Everyone, we meet again. It's you! Why were you just in my room? Hmm. It's a very cute room, Miss March. Just like you. Memo Keeper, let's put aside how you managed to sneak past everyone and board the Express for now. You mentioned a suggestion. I accidentally overheard how the Express obtains fuel. I just wanted to chat with everyone to see if we could work together. But now, it appears my suggestion could be the very lifeline that saves everyone. Please speak candidly. Depending on what you say, we could very well ask you to disembark. Ah, the Permanence's descendant. What a charming little dragon, especially with those mired memories of yours. But I digress. If the Astral Express is in urgent need of a special trailblazing expedition to recharge its engine, have you all considered this? Perhaps your destination could be a world that even the renowned Aki Vili never reached. Should you be able to lay down a new stretch of silver rail, the Express may never have to worry about energy ever again. Trailblazing to a world that even Aki Vili has never been to? Is that possible? Continue, Memo Keeper. This destination of which you speak, what sort of world is it? A world that many across the universe don't even know exists. A world hidden away from outside observation. 
its presence only revealed by the light from the mirror of the Garden of Recollection. A world fettered by three paths, its destiny hanging in the balance. The Eternal Land, Amphorius. I hope I'm not too late, child. I wasn't expecting it to be you. Don't you know how many sentry posts the family has built? And how hard it is to get you out of here? <laughs> Looks like my time's up. What do you mean? What time? Negotiation, interrogation, or death. My fate lies entirely in your hands, Lady Bonajade. The dance is done. Why bother with the compassionate pretense and give someone who's about to die the chance to talk? Despite your fall from grace, you still look well. I'm very glad to see that you're so full of verve. <sighs> Do not insult my pride with half-veiled sarcasm. Have you specially come to see me just to sate your vile vanity? Oh, of course not. I merely came to fulfill your younger sister's wishes. To offer you a generous trade. That is, if you're willing to accept. Robin? To build a true haven where everyone can attain peace. That's the oath between you siblings, isn't it? If I told you there was still a chance to realize this vow, would you be willing to talk to me then? <laughs> recognize the gravity of this question which is why you don't have to answer me right now go now you are free O chosen one who dare to exceed his bounds sever your wings descend to the mortal realm and walk their lands see what this world is truly like your charity as I mentioned earlier it's a trade and you don't have to give me an answer right now rewards are not reaped in a day and if there's one thing I'm best at it's waiting the sweet dream still continues and the night is still long you have plenty of time to contemplate your answer ah a word of advice for you before we part ways a word of warning from someone who's been in your shoes before. Life is too short to miss out on golden opportunities. Don Why don't you show Don Hong the letter? Holy shirt balls! The synthesizer on this express is lit as fudge! Following this synthesizing method, would it turn a bag of trash into treasure?
uh, it's not a new term. It just means uh, very peak. It means very fudging awesome. What the fork? This synesthesia beacon obviously knows about my language deficiency, but it still keeps updating the lexicon. Fudge this. Anyway, other than this synthesizer, are there any other cool toys on the Express? <laughs> Looks like you're prepared to be the Express's tour guide. Then, let's not waste any more time and get started. <laughs> Looks like you're prepared to be the Express.